Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. A layer of white ivory wax should cover the future area to be waxed. Overheat the instrument so that the wax soaks into the plaster, preventing the wax structures from becoming dislodged later. This exercise begins by focusing attention on the location of the center of the future cusp. Comparing with the replica above, note that the buccal cusp tips of the bicuspids and the molar are aligned in a harmonious curve in both occlusal and buccal views. A pencil cross at this point will be valuable later. The cusp cone is developed using the blunt end of a PKT number two to add small increments of wax. Several increments of wax will need to be added until the cusp cone is at the correct height. Note slightly higher than the lingual cusp cone. Draw out wax into the marginal ridges, first mesially, copying the contour from the natural cusp tip to the interproximal area. Again, several increments of wax need to be drawn out in layers and laid in a systematic manner. As the wax is laid down, visualize the bulk of wax needed to rebuild the occlusal surface. Note the wax can be worked to build a certain area. The same is repeated distally. Note the squareness to the labial surface. Keep referring back to the replica above for its precise shape. Next, develop the triangular ridge. Draw out wax from the base of the cusp cone. Add sufficient wax to develop the convexity of the triangular ridge. Several repetitive increments will have to be added to achieve this. Slightly over accentuate the contour to complete the triangular ridge. Additional wax is added to fill in the missing parts of the occlusal morphology. As wax is continually being added, try to visualize that amount necessary for its anatomy so that excess wax does not have to be trimmed later. Also note the position of the central fissures to the adjacent teeth. Additional wax is added to improve the buccal contour and accentuate the squareness of the buccal mesial and distal surfaces. It may be useful to lift up the slab and carve with a PKT number four. On completion of the axial contour, no wax should be left beyond the cut plaster margin. Brush away the wax chips with the stiff bristles on the larger end of the whip mix palette brush and zinc stearate. The wax adding portion is now complete. 
Now define the occlusal fissures with the PKT number three. Force the instrument through the wax in the precise direction that the fissure takes as in the replica above. Also concentrate on simulating an appropriate depth of fissure at this time. Brush away the wax chips with zinc stearate. Repeat the fissure carving as necessary. When finished, it is necessary to make some additions and a final reheating with the sharp end of the PKT number two, which will give a smooth convex appearance of the natural occlusal morphology. The instrument is heated to a similar degree as for picking up wax. Then lightly bury the tip of the instrument in a portion of the occlusal surface and work it toward each fissure. A smooth convex surface is created. Additional wax is added to accentuate adjacent secondary anatomy on either side of the triangular ridge. Tease the wax from the cusp ridge towards the central fissure. Reheating is continued. As the instrument cools, reheat and apply it to another area of the occlusal surface. Choose a new site to allow the previously reheated area to completely cool. Contour until the surface has been reheated. To achieve a very accurate wax replica, one needs to approach this exercise like an artist, adding, carving, and reheating different parts until satisfied that your wax creation exemplifies every feature. Especially notice the cuspal shapes, both mesially incisally and distally incisally, and from different angles. Constantly remove the debris with zinc stearate on the brush. Marginal ridges should match in the curvature and height of adjacent marginal ridges. The mesial marginal ridge, likewise. Fissures are finally burnished with the blunt end of a PKT number two, following each fissure in turn until every detail is complete. Zinc stearate is frequently used. Reburnish as many times as necessary until the desired result is achieved. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.